Yeah. Mike DeSimone, Jeff Jensen, my friends, wine experts, and author of this amazing book, Red Wine uh, with a really long subtitle. Thank you. Yes. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Mm. It's everything you need to know. And it is winning awards left and right, isn't it? Yeah, we're yes. really excited. Yeah, it is. We, uh, you know, we won the Gourmand International Award for Best Wine Book in the USA. Yeah. And uh, in May, we're going to China to get collect that award. And also, we're in the running for Best Wine Book in the World. Yeah. So, Which is co-authored with the great... Kevin's Rally. Kevin's Rally, yeah. Who's Windows of the World. Yes. Who's many things for the wine world. Um, educating people for centuries. Seems like forever, yeah. you guys. I think about 30 years. Okay, not centuries. <laughs> Let's not Definitely say not centuries. <laughs> Let's Kevin, talk Kevin, about the that. wine world, though. So much has changed over has. the centuries that Kevin yes. israeli has been teaching, yes. right? <laughs> One of the big things happening right now is um, cons companies coming together, right? Oh, There's yeah. sure, a lot sure. of mergers and acquisitions happening. Sure. Why, Jeff? Do you know, I mean, we just saw a constellation, you know, with uh, Charles Smith, for example. Right. It's, it's, we've always been big proponents of wines from the Pacific Northwest. In fact, we talked to a couple different importers about five years ago about acquiring some properties from the Pacific Northwest because some of our friends in Burgundy were setting up wineries there. And you know now a lot of these big companies are acquiring properties up in that area. And as you know, Charles Smith, their um, Pacific Northwest properties were just acquired by Constellation, I right. think, this week. So um, what does it do? It it doesn't create a monopoly because there are so many people in the world of wine. We don't have to worry about that. But what it does is it gives some of those wineries a broader distribution. So, you know, it's not really consolidation. I see it more as a better distribution. I also think, I mean, a lot of it is, uh, for example, taking, you know, talking about, you know, um, Constellation, Charles Smith, you know, yes. picking up a great brand from Walla Walla, Washington. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, the, the people in the wine world who are heavily invested in certain areas, yeah. Constellation has quite a few California brands. Suddenly, you know, you look at your portfolio and say, what are we missing? We We're there. missing right. Washington State. We right. need something else. So don't start a brand from the ground up. Take something in that people already yeah. know, that already has market it's penetration. Happening. We're also seeing private equity groups picking yes. up. Duckhorn was picked up sure. recently, right? Um, and uh, Farniente was the most recent exactly. that was picked up out of California. So we are seeing it. But this is nothing new, Tracy. I mean, yeah, you know, I know. insurance companies in France, AXA, for example. They've what, been in the wine game for a long time. They've been in the wine game Bordeaux. for a long time. They were buying Pichon Longueville. They were buying major, major houses. And the reason, maybe at that time, from an investment standpoint, was that resveratrol was considered to be a very important thing, you know, for health. And all the studies were showing that resveratrol came from red wine. So a lot of these major insurance companies were buying, uh, you know, uh, chateaus. They were buying wineries because be they wanted to own the product. However, the good news for yes. wine lovers is, is that resveratrol yes. is not bioavailable in pill form at all. Right. If you want the antioxidant qualities, you have, you have to, to drink, drink red yes. wine. Exactly. <laughs> Which is what we have to start doing. Yes, yes. So we're going to start drinking and we're going to keep talking. Okay, Jeff, tell us about the first wine, though. So the first wine we're going to have is a Peter Lehman. This is a portrait Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's a wonderful, wonderful wine. It's a Cabernet that's, as you can see, it's under screw cap. You know, the, uh, the South Africans, the New Zealanders, the Australians think nothing of having a wine under screw cap. You know, as Americans, we're a little bit weird about that. Yeah, yeah. We want a cork. But you know what? Um, they've been doing wines like this for quite a long time, and they show that they right. have great Give aging potential. Try. There's one wine called Hill of Grace from Australia, $600 it's a bottle. It's actually $800, $800 a bottle now, and that's Sorry. under screw cap. It was, it was $600. It's a great investment. <laughs> you know? The Peter Lehman Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon, on the other hand, is $18. So yeah, this so is so a... So that brings us... Okay, first of all... Well, cheers. Cheers. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year, finally. Happy everything. This brings us, though, to, like, the millennials who are willing to taste and get out there and don't want to break the bank. Correct. Right. I think one of the things, you know, older, they say older wine drinkers drank region. So you're, oh, so, so people. Nice. Isn't that great? $18? $18. $18. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So older wine drinkers drank regions. They drank Bordeaux. They right. drank Rioja. They drank Tuscany. Yes. Right. Um, you know, Chianti. Younger wine drinkers, especially millennials, they really got into this drinking grapes. Right. So it's like, so right. Chardonnay, Pinot Grigio, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot. And they are also very, very adventurous. Right. They will drink wines exactly. from, from different regions. And I think that's actually an amazing thing for it the is. wine world. 
It like is. That these kids are willing to come out and taste wines. They want to hear the story, right? right. They want to know that somebody actually got their nails dirty when they, they exactly. picked the grapes. Right. right. Well, exactly. You know, Which you know, is the whole point of it. I'm you know, wine, take another sip wine making yeah, yeah. is farming. <laughs> you know? It is at, at its highest level. Well, you know, Tracy, when we wrote the book, one of the things that, you know, let's face it, you know, ask anybody out there in the audience, you know, what are your name five or six grapes? They're going to name Cabernet Sauvignon, they're going to name Merlot, they're going to name Pinot Noir. You know, coming up with 50 grapes. You can't even name five. Exactly. <laughs> I, 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 stopped, I stopped after three. Wait, but so I can name 50. Grape grapes. 50 yes. different, 43 different varieties, mm. and then we covered. 43 grapes. 43 grapes, and then we covered seven regional blend styles. So See, but, Bordeaux, Rioja, right. Chianti, that are, are not blends. necessarily right. one grape. But this is what's perfect about the millennials, because then you have all these wine clubs, right. or you have like the Amazons of the world that right. are selling all right. these little. Producers can get out there now, exactly. yes. thanks to the well, likes of an Amazon. Can I show you something in the of back? Of course. We actually have a checklist, so you can check off the grapes that you've drank. Oh, isn't that fun? Yeah. It's like, where's Waldo? I go Kinda, around the world exactly. and check off my grapes. Can you find that? No, I'm not going to find it right so, now. It's, it's but there the, is, it's but the there is the a book. checklist towards the back of the book, so there's 50 different That's grapes awesome. and styles. But so while you're, while you're looking, to oh, your point, 65% of millennials seek out rare Wine and unusual checklist. wines. Oh, that's so cool. See? And 75% actually, though, do aspire to spend more someday. Right. So there yeah. is an aspirational thing yeah. about wine, too, isn't oh, there? There is. Absolutely. I, you know, I, and the people want to have a wine that they, the wine they can afford and the wine that they kind of wish they could afford. You know, and we wrote, like, you know, for the millennial population, and we're all, you know, Gen Xers and, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. Is that we like infographics? You know what I mean? Yeah, we like it's pictures. pictures. Yeah. yeah, we, we like, like pictures. pictures. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, yes, I, I Let's understand face it. that. But, but so we have a bunch of wines here that are yeah. under twenty five dollars. Yes, yeah. Everything over here actually we have the talking about um, Washington State, Pacific Northwest, yeah. Skyfall so Merlot is from Washington State. And, and that's it's a really not named after the uh, it's James, not Bond. The James Bond. Movie. No, it, there's yeah. all these boulders in the vineyard and yeah. so it looks like they fell from the sky. Um, uh, we also have, you know, cool. Bordeaux is one of those things that everyone right. hears Bordeaux and thinks, oh, it's super expensive. It's expensive. The sure. Chateau Bonnet, um, which is a Merlot Cabernet Sauvignon yes. blend, is that's about $18. Yeah. Amazing. And yeah. that's again a screw top. And again a screw, again a screw top. top. Yeah, which is kind of interesting for France. Totally. And, and then, then we have a very fun wine here. This is a Chinon. Now, Chinon is the red wine of the Loire Valley, which right. is Cabernet Franc. Right. So the producer on this is, it's confusing because the producer is Sauvignon, which kind of so makes you think Sauvignon, right. <laughs> right, 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 you know, Cabernet Sauvignon, but it's a Cabernet Franc. So there's a fun grape. That, it's usually a blending grape. Yeah, you don't me, get a lot of like single variety. Salt. Exactly. Yeah. Or, pepper. or pepper. Or pepper. You know, it's yeah. spicy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. And here it's, it's like here it's the, the meat. <laughs> yes. Now it's the meat. Here exactly. it's the meat. Exactly. It's the main course in that. So it's a so, so Chinon is Cabernet Franc. So you mentioned France, though. Let's yes. talk about overseas and what's happened with the weather. Yeah. Well, you know what? Just uh, we were actually visiting Bordeaux, and that's why we brought this one on. We went to Chateau Bonnet. And we went to a bunch of wineries. I'm going to say we visited about 40 wineries Maybe 40 in a uh, week. over a week. It was the fourth It's exhausting mark. work, <laughs> but someone else it was. But, um, you know, some of them served us lunch, so yeah, it was okay. Them. Problem so, is, it was three lunches in one day. That's, but. That's, that's a problem. It's a problem. Elevens is lunch, <laughs> mid afternoon snack. Uh, but one of the things about Bordeaux, from an investment standpoint, is that Bordeaux had a really tough year. Some of the wineries actually lost 70% of their grapes. Wow. Um, they had it was so hot. No, they, no, had, they, they had, had hail. Frost they, and hail. Hail and yeah. frost early in the, in the spring. Early in the season that just did, that just, you know, the the young but the buds were out, right. you know, and they were they were um, not even grapes yet and, and they just they shattered fell, and fell off. Yeah. And some of the grapes that actually did reach maturity were not big grapes. They were like tiny little grapes. So the juice was down. So they're saying about some some wineries, 70%. There's 50 to yeah. 70%. And it's mostly at your lower to mid-priced wineries. Right. The very high-end Bordeaux are all up on the higher slopes. Like saint million so is up okay. on. They so they did okay. okay. They didn't so get hit with that frost. So what happens to prices, though? Are people going to have to worry about price increases? N no, because, Not you know, really. wine, wineries really, they can't pass that on to consumers. But that's Every a double-edged question. We'll talk about that. Everyone we talked to said that that's going to put, unless they're, unless it's a winery that has, that has a lot of yeah. cash reserves, <laughs> You have to keep drinking when you talk about people. You have to talk about wine. People who yeah. are now, they're, they're, they're digging into their cash reserves, and, and without having a lot of wine to sell this year, they're looking at four to five years of not having up. the capital That's to crazy. keep their winery running. So basically, running. they're eating it. 
Exactly. They're, they're eating it. Yeah. I mean, but what does happen in Bordeaux and in many uh, of the older wine regions is that you have generations of reserves, you right. know? So somebody that's coming in, to, say for example, if we all decide to go buy a winery in Bordeaux right now, we have to come up with the, the capital investment to buy the land, the okay. tractors. The we could probably get a good deal this year. We probably, <laughs> it's a good deal to buy land in, in Bordeaux this year. That, if, so there will, there will be people selling vineyards. Certainly better than Manhattan. Yes. Well. <laughs> but that said, um, you have um, a lot of people who do have a family history of owning chateaus for years. So they don't they don't really need to buy their, you know, land. They don't need to buy maybe they gotcha. need to buy a new tractor. So they'll be okay. The chateau's they, paid for. They, they're going to be They okay. need operating but capital. Like and I, we should want to move on to the next wine, but uh, you yeah, guys just did a Brunello tasting yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Has also some of the smallest harvest they've had in a while because yes, of weather. Yes. Do we worry there? Do you know what um, what happens? We spend a lot of time in Bordeaux, we spend a lot of time in Burgundy. A lot of time in Italy, and what happens is that it becomes more rare. So when you have rarity, you're going to have an increased price. Okay, so in Bordeaux, um, there is some rarity, but not really like in Saint Emilion or some of those regions that you know are already you mean higher priced. Rare wines. Rare wines. You're wine. going to have you're going to have less wine and more demand. So like for Chateau Petrus or for Chateau Margaux. Right. The, they, the first growth. They actually did okay. You know, they're they're going to have their normal volume. But what you're going to find in Italy, Brunello, for example, is that you're going to have less wine. Right. So, so the price so the, the, is going to go up. Yeah, the it volume's not in that case. And yeah. something like that, we're looking at a commodity wine. Yeah, the prices are going to come up. But they're going to come up a little bit. It, the other thing is right, it's, that... It's not going to blow you over. Right. You're but, still probably going to buy now. your favorite wine. You're and you're al and although fun. they had not great weather, it actually was... And, and they don't have yeah. a, a strong harvest yeah. volume-wise, they actually wound up with a very good quality wine this year. Okay, so, so what did. are we tasting now? So this is Claude de Siete. Uh, Michel Roland, who's one of our friends, he wrote the foreword to our uh, Southern Hemisphere book. He's considered the million dollar wine consultant. He travels around to wineries, charges a million dollars plus. Hey, Michelle, I, you're, you're worth every penny. We want Michelle's job. But, exactly. But that said, um, wineries pay him to, uh, to come in, consult, and make better wines that get 95, 96, 97 points, okay? He makes a, a typical style. Claude de Siete is Clo of seven families in Argentina. So this, so this is, is Argentina. Yeah, this it's is Argentina, Argentine. so it's Mendoza. Yeah. So Clo de los Siete. Clo is a walled vineyard, a walled vineyard in French. Siete is Spanish for seven. It's uh -oh. seven French wine families came in together Argentina. in Argentina, Argentina yeah. and planted a vineyard together. And this is so this is a wine that Michel Roland makes, yeah. one of many in Mendoza. This is a great steakhouse wine. This is amazing. And now this is also reasonably priced? This is actually yeah. about an $18 wine. Again, yeah. so and... This again, though, is like... Don't worry, you, we keep going up in price. I'm sure we do. Me. But we get out of Napa. You, once you get out, and sadly, you get out of yeah. Napa, the yeah. prices, you get a bang for your buck. You do. You do. You know, and you can go to like, I mean, you know, we're down here on Wall Street today, and you can go to great restaurants like, you know, Delmonico's or, you know, Francis Capital Tavern, Grill. Capital Grill, or... And these are wines that you can actually buy at a decent price on the wine list because they're not really expensive to start with. That's a great point. You know, Jeff. one like when you open the wine list, yeah. turn the California page. With all due yeah. respect to with California. With all due respect to California, right? right. Turn it. Not not not, but I'm gonna, not I'm gonna bring you back to not California. We're gonna come back to that, but I just wanna say um, nobody really knows what's going on with the new tax regulations. With entertaining. With entertaining. Yeah. Entertaining expenses are thrown out, which means if you are going out to dinner and you're taking clients out, you can't buy those bottles that are three hundred dollars at right. retail, that are seven and eight and nine hundred dollars on a wine list. You need to really cut back That's on that. That's a great point. Yeah. And we were just hearing about this right. regarding the Super Bowl and things like right. that. You can't t and take you can't. expenses exactly. anymore. Right. Exactly. You can't. You take were those able to take them under the previous tax code. I mean, I think 10, 12 years ago, you were able to take one hundred percent of that deduction. And then under the most recent tax it revision was fifty percent. Meals, meals were fifty. Now meals it's it zero. Right. So, so do you think this is going to hurt the industry? I think there's going to be a lot of waiters and waitresses out there that had a lot of customers who came in on expense accounts 
and they might find that the checks are a little bit lower, so their tips are a little bit lower. But people are still doing business dinners, are, and that's sure. where, when, right. like, when we talk to people and they're like, "What should I look for?" That's where we always say, "Look for those wines that are thirty dollars to fifty dollars right. that are going to be in a restaurant, maybe a right. hundred to a hundred and fifty, and yeah. you can still get a you can right. still get a really nice wine, but you're but you're not look you're not looking at you know a three thousand dollar dinner. You're right. looking right. at a, a seven hundred dollar dinner. But going to Argentina. Going right. to like your lower end Bordeaux, like go, doing Spain, you guys mm -hmm. know Spain like the back of your hand, like going right. to places like that is really what you should do when you're going on a business dinner, especially exactly. in a time I, like but this. But I do, I know you said exactly. throw out California, and I no, we I kinda, can't. I but love we can't, California. And, you know, <laughs> and we're going to taste California next, correct? We, and yes, we also we are. do, we do a lot of consulting on, um, you know, for people's private sellers. And, the other, and um, so that's where also people right. should look at reasonable priced wine. Right. We're going to look at a couple of Californias that correct. will age well because, you know, you don't want everybody says, oh, I've got all this wine in my cellar, but I never drink it. I don't have people who will appreciate it. 40 to 60% of the wine in your cellar should be wine that you want to drink right. and let me on an average you, night. You can get hit by a <laughs> cab on the way home you can, tonight. You can. I mean, my, even my daughter the other night said, Mom, open the wine. It could be your last day. <laughs> it can. That's right. Well, thank you, but, and I opened the wine. You know, we do a, a lot of uh, teaching and stuff on cruise ships, and, um, you know, traditionally a lot of the cruise ship passengers a little bit older. And I always love when I have this 85-year-old woman or man raise their hand and say, I have a question. I have a, sh uh, a bottle of Chateau Margaux. When should I drink it? And then <laughs> the I, minute I, you I, get home. Right. <laughs> Ten years ago. And I'm like, how old are you? And they say 85. I'm like, drink it soon. You know? <laughs> because you're, you're going to leave it to your kids. I mean, Right. And they're... Who may or may not rats. appreciate yeah. it. No, you can right, leave a trust fund to your kids. Don't leave them your wine. Exactly. You Drink know? it. Right. Um, all right, let's talk about Napa now. Okay. We're about to taste a Napa. Yeah, here. This, okay. This is a Girard Cab Sav. Fantastic. From Napa Valley. And this is a really nice Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa. It's got a Napa Appalachian. And this is one. I, and I want you to taste that. And I want you to tell me, because you know Napa, you know Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. What do you think this wine costs? Well, so I'm guessing you're tricking me, but I'm going to say it's got to be at least, you know, like a solid $35, Okay. Bottle. No, you were there. It's a, yep, yep. It's a 30 to $35 it's a bottle. It's a solid $35 bottle. It's a great Isn't bottle. Isn't that a solid yeah. wine yes. for $35? But now, let's talk about Napa. Are, are yeah. they okay? It's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. open for business. Napa is open for business. Unfortunately, a lot of people lost their homes. Yes. There were seven in Napa and Sonoma. 7,000 structures. Seven th and the surrounding counties, 7,000 structures were lost. People people lost homes mainly, businesses you know, burned, restaurants burned. Yeah. However, wow. for the wines, what happened was you had a lot of brush fires on the edges of vineyards. Right. Because it was the, just the end of the summer season, the, wines, the vines were still wet. So yeah, the vines still, still had good turgor right. and vigor. So fires so they approached, the fire. uh, they approached vineyards. They burned the cover crops. They burned the weeds and the grasses right. on the bottom, but it just blew through the vineyards. Some of the stuff at the edges of vineyards that was very close to all to the right. brush burned. But the but like ninety five percent of the vineyards are fine, and more than so eighty percent of the grapes were picked already, right. and the wine was being and made. And that was the beauty of it too: the timing. If there's ever a good time for right. a fire, right. right? It was late in the picking season, and yeah. so and harvest was almost over. So that was great. So yes, support Napa. Yeah, but absolutely. If you have yeah. a budget and you're taking clients out to dinner, and your boss says, "Don't yeah. spend this," <laughs> maybe turn the page. You know what though? But Napa, I mean, Napa needs to help right now. So so, um, you know, one of the things yeah. that we, we try to do is, you know, we do drink wine from all around the world, but, you know, we can drink local wine here in New York, but California is also the same country, so we're drinking local. Totally. So we're helping out you we're know, some of our, our fellow countrymen. That, Tell us about the rest of the wines okay. you have. You know, so, we also brought... Um, talking about the, California the, again. The Calling um, Russian River Valley Pinot Noir. So Russian River Valley, we talked a little tiny bit about Pacific Northwest, Oregon. Russian River Valley in California is one of the places right. in the U.S. that but makes really... But this is really, a Deutsch family wine, correct? This is. This uh, is. Yes, one, it's it actually, is. it's a combination of... Um, Peter, uh, Deutsch. Peter Deutsch and Jim Nance, right. the sports the commentator. CBS sports commentator. Yeah, because right. right. so, he makes a Chardonnay too. Right, yes. he does. So this is kind of like you know our like little pre-Super Bowl, pre-Olympics <laughs> sporting Love events it. wine. Yeah. Okay. Now this is also reasonably priced. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's between thirty-five and thirty-nine dollars, depending on the state. You do not have to break right. the bank. Right. So we do Although have a speaking couple, of breaking the bank. Well, we do have. A, I mean, again, not breaking the bank. This is um, Chateau Pabouse. And this is owned by um, the Dow family. 
and it's a, a winery. The Dow Chemical Family? Uh, no, no it's di not. different. The gentleman named Robert Dow. Yeah, Robert oh, Dow. Oh, oh, oh. And it's a, a, a wonderful chateau. And our link to this is Michelle Roland again, who um, is the winemaker here, man. right? And our friend. He's the consultant for Chateau Pabouse. Now, most uh, Bordeaux's, you know, in Entre de Mer region and up on the hills can go for, like, you know, some of them can go 50, 60, 100, 200, 600 dollars. This is an amazing wine from Bordeaux for $60 a bottle. Oh, wow. So this is a really, really super well-made, handcrafted wine. And it's a $60 wine that drinks like a three or four yes. or $800 wine. So, but, and yeah. we love those kinds of deals. Right. We have to talk about this bottle here, though. Yes. Okay, yes, we, we do. Because we did talk about China. I know yes. you guys are heading off to yeah. China because yes. you're yes. going to come back and report on how yes, we what's are. going on yes. in China. Yes. This now is made by... Uh, LBMH, LBMH. 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 Uh, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, publicly traded company. And this yep. is called Ao Yun. It is um, from a vineyard in, it's actually near Shangri-La. Yeah. So it's in the, uh, kind of, like it's, in near Tibet. it's in the yeah. foot, it's actually in the foothills of the Himalayas. It's near Tibet. The, yes. and, and in fact, the people in the region, um, they don't, they don't speak a Chinese dialect. They actually speak a Tibetan dialect. Yes. Um, they so all ride, ho they ride horses. And they um, make this wine there. They do. Yes. They have a French winemaker um, who Max, ha Max uh, who has previously worked in Bordeaux, of course. Well, he worked and, at Cheval Blanc. Yeah, he worked so at Cheval Blanc, and he is living in Shangri-La with his family. These vineyards existed. Don't you want to say that you live in Shangri-La? I, I do, do, by the way, every I do, day. Really? I do. <laughs> well, he invited. Come to my house in Shangri-La. That is, we are going to be going there. Uh, it's amazing. Gonna, no, but this is not cheap. No. This is $300 a bottle. So it is a really well-crafted wine from China with the provenance of LVMH. So you have an amazing wine made by an amazing winemaker with grapes that are grown at 10,000 feet. I mean, this is probably one of the highest vineyards in the world. Which is why, and it's hard to wrap your head around it, there is a premium on the wine. Correct. Yes. Because, man, that is hard work. Right. That is really hard work. When it's, it's that high, it's, it's very, it's, I mean, hand-picking it's, it, probably. It's very hard to get to. Mm -hmm. um, yes. You've, you know, and, and basically, they in, in terms of like teaching people, it's not like France or Italy where you've right. got people who have who worked. Who drink wine. Who, ha, who drink right. wine, but whose families have worked vineyards for generations. Right. When they do they, simple, the simple things like, ca like canopy management, how are we going to cut the leaves right. to either provide shade or allow sun for the grapes. They have to teach but isn't this everyone like, how to do everything. Right, they're starting from scratch. Right. Isn't right. this, though, a great bottle for people to put in their wine cellars? It Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And that, that, that's a great Because it's young. Yeah. yeah. Tracy, you know, some of the wines that we've tasted today are meant to be drunk kind of now or within the next oh, few years. Oh, now. Yeah, now. We should drink <laughs> now. And then, you know, some of them can lay down. Like Claude de Siete, I'd lay down. Gerard, I'd lay down. This Pinot Noir, super. Chateau Pabouse, it's it's a baby right now. It needs a few more years. It drinks very, very well Actually, now. Actually, both of these wines are brand Drink, new projects, yeah. which is interesting. Chateau yeah. Pabouse, I think there's only two or three what vintages available. And the Ao Yun, yeah, that's a 13. There's some 13 left in the market. The 2014 is coming Just, out we in, a, tasted it last in a couple night. of months. And if you don't yeah. have $300 to spend on a bottle and you're in Los Angeles, uh, we just found out Wally's Wine Bar yeah. in Los Angeles in sells this by the glass for $91 a glass. <laughs> so, God bless the Corbin. <laughs> you are the best. Thank cheers, you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>